Hi, welcome. This podcast of Chapter 16 um, deals with our uh, sources and dealing with short-term financing. So remember, that uh, these are the things we're going to look at, actually, but the spontaneous financing, which are our accruals and um, accounts payable. We'll talk about bank loans, commercial papers, um, both unsecured and secured bank loans. So uh, spontaneous financing with an accrual, this is really an interest-free loan for whoever's provided the um, services where they've deferred to the payment. So what this means is, um, as an example, you have somebody come into your house and they do some house painting for you and they're done and they send you a bill and you have 30 days to pay it. Well, that's a type of an accrual. That is a that is an interest-free loan for the 30 days until you have to make the payment. Um, wages are another type of accrual where we owe money to the employees for the work they've done, but we've not yet paid them. Again, that's a, a very short term, but an interest-free loan. They've done the work; we haven't paid them for it. Um, Accounts payable, kind of similar. These are effectively loans from suppliers for selling on credit. So again, it, um, uh, you call up your supplier, you order goods, they deliver it to you, and they tell you pay within 30 days. That's a interest-free loan for 30 days. The the vendor has provided you with that credit. Um, there are usually some credit terms. So. Based on the uh, cash conversion cycle we saw in the earlier podcast, remember that companies are looking to speed up their cash collections. And so a very common one, um, a vendor might offer the buyer a credit term, meaning a discount, if they pay early. In this case, uh, this is a common example. We read this 210 net 30. And what it means is there is a 2% discount if paid within 10 days. Otherwise, the net amount is due within 30 days. And the purpose here is to encourage the buyer to um, pay for those goods 20 days earlier than they needed to, and that speeds up the cash conversion cycle. Um, most companies, when offered a discount, to take it. In fact, some may even borrow money from a bank to take it if they don't have enough to do it. The reason being, and I'll show you this math here, is if you pass on the discount, it is actually a very expensive uh, form of financing. So let's look at this. Uh, 210 net 30 means if we don't pay within 10 days, we're basically paying 2% interest for the next 20 days use of that money. Well, if we were to uh, figure that what out, that 2% for 20 days is on an annual basis, that works out to be about 36.5%. So it would be, if we can go to the bank and borrow money at 5%, we'd, we'd be much better off doing that and taking the discount versus having the vendor finance it for us and then what works out to be a rate of almost 37%. Um, abuse of trade, uh, trade credit terms. Um, trade credit, which originally was a service to a customer, you know, don't you know, we'll bill you in 30 days, is now basically expected. Uh, it arises, why we have trade credit, is arises from the time lag between when the goods are received and when we pay for the goods. Um, payment beyond the due date is common. Uh, we sometimes call this stretching payables or uh, the leaning on the trade. I guess that's actually not a term I've ever heard, but stretching payables or delaying payment. Um, and uh, if a company is slow at making its payments, then they tend to receive poor credit ratings. Unsecured uh, bank loans, these, rep these are a primary source of short-term financing for most companies. Um, a bank loan uh, contains a promissory note. A promissory note is a written or formal promise to repay an amount borrowed plus interest. Um, for most short-term notes, there is no monthly payment. So you're, most of you are borrowing, you're probably familiar with the idea of an installment loan. You borrow some money, you make payments every month. Uh, for most businesses, short-term notes are not financed that way. If they borrow, a company borrows $10,000 for five months, they make no payments for the five months, then when it matures, they pay the 10,000 principal plus interest. 
Um, some other types of um, unsecured bank loans. A line of credit. <laughs> and for most businesses, uh, banks working with businesses, a line of credit is an informal, non-binding agreement between the bank and the firm, specifying a maximum amount that can be borrowed uh, during a period of time. Uh, the reason it's non-binding is that if the bank wants to rescind this, they can do that. Um, that's a little bit different than a revolving line of credit. Um, uh, a revolving line of credit uh, is, is a little bit different where the bank actually guarantees the availability of funds. <clears throat> so with the um, uh, line of credit, it's there, available, but if the bank decides to rescind that, they can. With the revolving line, uh, the bank it guarantees that those things will be available. Compensating balances. Um, sometimes the bank requires a percentage of the loan be left in the account and available at all times. So you borrow a million dollars, a compensating balance may be a hundred thousand. So you're, you're borrowed a million, you're going to pay back a million plus interest, but a hundred thousand has to be left in the bank account uh, and cannot be um, use this is what this is known as a compensating balance. Uh, this is good for the bank because it increases the return. In essence, they're earning interest on the million, but they've only have the exposure of the nine hundred thousand. It's bad for the borrower be, just because the opposite of that it increases the cost of the loan. Um, sometimes they might require a bank might require average balance requirements. Uh, they require um, a firm to maintain a minimum balance in the account, uh, averaged over a day or week or however they do that. Um, and they, and those, again, those are types of compensating balances. Um, with short-term debt, borrowers are required to be out of short-term debt for a period of once a year. And so within that, for every year, they got to be out of it usually 30 to 45 days. What this does is it makes sure that short-term projects are being financed with short-term debt, and it prevents long-term debt from financing, um, or ex excuse me, I said that backwards. It prevents um, long-term projects from being financed with short-term borrowing. And you know, maybe let me just add to that. Remember that short-term borrowing is cheaper for companies, so uh, the banks aren't interested in, in doing that. They want um, they want a group to, um, if you're going to have a long-term project, you need to finance that with long-term debt. The bank makes more money doing that. Commercial paper. This uh, commercial paper are actually notes issued by large, financially strong firms and sold to investors. Um, commercial paper is not necessarily sold by a bank. Uh, it's big company. You know, IBM has a, a billion dollars in cash. That cash isn't doing them any good. So they issue commercial paper. And they are basically lending money on a very short-term basis to other firms. Um, these are um, unsecured. The um, Again, the borrowers are usually other companies. Uh, the maturity is very short term, so usually less than uh, 270 days. They're considered very safe investments, uh, but there's no flexibility about repayment. It has to be repaid. Um, one of the primary reasons, or there's no flexibility in it, um, one of the primary reasons is commercial paper, paper is a negotiable instrument. If any of you have taken a business law class and you've learned about negotiable instruments, you know that commercial paper then can be sold and traded between um, investors. Uh, Short-term credits can secured by current assets. Sometimes um, in a, a borrowing arrangement we might have to use a current asset as collateral. This is actually very safe for uh, companies that require this. If, if you're required to use your inventory as collateral or accounts receivable as collateral, they, they, the reason that some like to do this is because they are uh, what we call self-liquidating. So as the accounts receivable is collected, it immediately pays off the loan. As the inventory is sold and, and collected in cash, it immediately pays off the loan. There are um, two primary ways that accounts receivable are used um, uh, as it relates to financing. 
And uh, one of them is called uh, pledging accounts receivable, and the other one is factoring accounts receivable. Uh, pledging means that accounts receivable is really collateral for the loan. So if I have a sale, I now have $100,000 in accounts receivable that I'm going to try to collect. Um, I might not want to wait 30 days to, to get that money. I might have needs to have that cash now. I can go to the bank, pledge the 100000 of accounts receivable, and maybe they lend me 75000 that now I have that cash up front. And then as I'm collecting the receivable, I'm paying off the bank you know, with the interest and fees and whatever I have to pay there. Um, the other one is factoring accounts receivable. And in factoring accounts receivable, the receivable is actually sold directly to the financing source, like a finance company. So um, uh, when we factor our receivables, we're selling the receivable to the factor. They take control of the account. Um, uh, let's see. The factors perform credit checks. They want to make sure they want to figure out if they think you know the item will be collected and let me have, I had a little graph here for you so here's kind of the how it works uh, so the customer places an order with the company the company requests a credit review with the factor so the factor is reviewing the customer the factor approves the credit and pays the company or advances the company the cash it's as if the customer had just paid cash for it. The company then ships the goods and the customer makes a payment to the factor. Okay, so how does the factor make any money doing this? Well, if 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 the good was sold for a hundred dollars, you know, the factor only advances seventy-five dollars to the company, collects a hundred from the customer. That's how the, the factor makes money. Um, inventory financing. Inventory again can can be um, it can be used as collateral. Um, it's a little bit complicated, um, as you might think about it. I mean, some some inventory is perishable, so that creates a particular problem. But here's some things to consider. Um, one is a blanket lien. A blanket lien means the creditor has a blanket lien against all the inventory of the company. Um, what this prevents uh, some companies from doing is saying, well, well, no, your loan was against this inventory that I sold, and this new inventory is something different. Uh, banks won't usually go for that. A uh, chattel mortgage agreement is that the um, inventory is tagged and can't be sold without the creditor's approval, so the creditor knows which inventory item is being sold. And then warehousing is an agreement where the inventory is moved and stored by a third party. And these are ways to uh, protect the lenders in an inventory financing arrangement. All right, and that concludes the podcast on uh, short-term financing.